In C, we have something called a struct, which is a user definable type that holds multiple pieces of data, potentially of different types. It's a convenient way to bundle multiple variables into a single one. This can be very beneficial for passing variables to functions. So you just have to pass one instead of many. Hence, this is very useful for organizing data and making the code much more readable. You may be already familiar with the concept of classes and objects. These don't exist in C natively. You can think of a struct as a class with only data members and no methods. So let's declare a struct. You can declare a struct in this fashion. You write the keyword struct and then the tag name, for example, cyan. And inside the braces, you just put the member variables. For example, a pointer, which is the name of the cyan, a boolean saying that the cyan is actually a super cyan. Okay. And another value can be an integer for, I don't know, power. Now we have our cyan struct with these member variables. The declaration of a struct is often done at a global scape outside any function. So the struct is globally available, of course. So you have this blueprint that can be used by every function. Basically, what we have done here is that we have created a new type. The full name of this type is struct cyan. And not only saying you have to say struct saying let's make an example here in my main function i can say struct saying and the name of this variable of this specific type let's say goku here in this line i declared a struct with the name goku so here i have the variable goku which is of type struct saying now we simply have to use it right we have to put some values inside the member variables of this struct well we're going to use the dot operator to access the individual fields so we say goku dot name so the name is going to be a literal string goku goku dot super saiyan let's say false and then we have a goku dot power you can put a random integer 42 let's say okay now let's just print all the actual member variables so we're gonna simply use this printf accessing the variable name with this notation goku.name and here we simply use a ternary operator saying is e a super saiyan in that case give me the string otherwise you give me this other string and then we access power here okay we compile the code and we run and we get the actual string okay so this is a very bare bone code to declare and struct and use it now this piece of code is pretty annoying right you need this many lines to put values into the member variables but you don't want that there must be a better way to initialize the struct variable let me show you how at the time of declaration and this is very important it has to be done at this level we simply put all the values of the member variables inside curly braces. There are basically two ways by which you can initialize a struct. You can respect the exact order of the member variables like they have been declared. So first of all, I'm going to put the name, then the boolean, and then the integer in this fashion. Let's compile and run. And as you can see, it works exactly the same. The fact that the fields in the initializer need to be in the same order as they've been declared can be a little buggy, right? If later you want to change the actual struct declaration, all the code can break. So this is not the best way to handle the initialization. For example, here, if I change the order, I do something like this, you can see that I get a very weird result. I get an all is a super saiyan with level 42. So the better way is to explicitly tell the actual member variable that you want to initialize. So a more robust way would be to do dot name assign Goku, dot super saiyan assign false, dot power assign 42. This is the most robust way to initialize whatever struct. So here, if later I would like to change the order of these variables, not a problem at all, because here at this point, I've been very explicit. So of course this is a safer code. Important to notice, similar to array initializers, any missing fields are initialized to zero. For example, let's remove here the power. I get the, the power level is equal to zero. Now let's create a simple function that takes the actual struct as an argument. Let's do void super saiyan 
and the actual type which is struct say again and then what well you can pass the actual copy of the struct or you can pass the reference of the struct as a pointer of course if you want to change the actual parameters in the main function you need to use a pointer so we are gonna do that so there are basically two cases when you'd want to pass a pointer to the actual struct the first case is when you need the function to be able to make changes to the struct that we passed in and have those changes show in the caller or another case is when the struct is somewhat large and it's more expensive to copy that onto the stack than it is to just copy a pointer. Generally speaking, it's far more common to pass a pointer to a struct to a function, even though it's not illegal to pass a copy of the struct itself. So let's say that this function needs to change the boolean super saiyan to true. Here we have the actual saiyan, which is a pointer to a struct saiyan, right? How can I access the actual member variable super saiyan? With the dot operator? Well, this doesn't work because the dot operator only works on structs. It doesn't work on pointers to structs. Okay, so we can do something like this. I can dereference the actual variable saiyan, right? So I dereference this and I get a struct to the saiyan, right? And then I use the dot operator. Now I can access the super saiyan boolean. Perfect. And I want to set this to true. Okay, a side effect after this transformation can be that the power has increased tenfold. And we agree on the fact that this type of writing is kind of not elegant. Indeed, there is a better way to do the same operation elegantly. You simply do Saiyan and then you use the arrow operator. As you can see, you can access all the variables, all the member variables, and then you say power per equal, let's say 10. So these two ways are exactly the same thing. The only difference is that the first one kind of suck. It's not very well readable. And the second one is pretty cool. So now let's just call this function, Super Saiyan, passing uh, the address of the actual variable. And let's print all the data again. Okay, let's compile and launch. And as you can see, everything worked properly. Of course, we have to change the level. So what do we do? Well, very simply, we go here and we say dot power equal 42. Let's do everything again. And boom, here we are. Now is a Super Saiyan with level 420. This, my friend, is syntactic sugar for this specific line. They are exactly the same. The only thing is that this looks much better. Syntactic sugar. Let's see a simple way to copy the structs. So let's create another struct Saiyan Goku copy. And to perform a copy, we simply say Goku copy, assign Goku. That's it. So this, my friend, is a shallow copy. Now I'll explain what I mean by that. First of all, let's see the actual values, if the copy has been correct. So as you can see, they are exactly the same. Very fast, I've been able to actually copy two structs. So what do I mean by shallow copy? Well, I mean that all the fields are copied as is, including pointer to things. In our specific case, we have one pointer, which is this one, right? Char star, a pointer to the name Goku. Now, the thing is that this literal string is found in a place in memory which is not modifiable. If any doubts about this, I made a video about, check it out. So I cannot quite modify and perform some mess. Let me give you a visual. As you can see, the two structs have the same pointer pointing to the same piece of memory, which is in a read-only storage place. So let's write the same code in a different way this time. Well, first of all, include string.h because I want to use string duplicate. So here, at the name I do string duplicate goku like that now basically the string duplicate function allocates sufficient memory for a copy of the string perform the actual copy and returns a pointer to it after that you have just to free that now this string is in a place in memory which can be modified so this time we have this scenario which is exactly like before with the only difference that now i have the string which is modifiable you already understand what can be the issue here, right? 
Now here I can mess around with the code. I can say Goku uh, copy name position zero assign the char star like that. What is the obvious consequence of this piece of code? Well, of course, I'm going to change for both structs. This is the problem of a shallow copy. The problem is that we have the first Goku, right? Which has been initialized with all those, with this variable, with these variables. And then the actual copy that we can see here is gonna copy everything as is. So the name points exactly in the same place. Here I don't have a string duplicate and a string exactly for my Goku copy. Now, given that I use string duplicate, this is a modifiable place and this is dangerous. If I change one copy, I'm gonna change all the actual instances of the actual struct. Bad code. So keep in mind that you have to perform yourself a deep copy. So here you should do something like Goku copy dot name, assign string duplicate, Goku copy in this fashion. Now with this specific piece of code, my copy of the struct has its own specific string, right? Now, even though he's gonna modify the first char to a star, nobody cares because this is personal to this Goku copy. I hope you understand the difference between shallow copy and deep copy. Now let's do two structs, which are exactly the same. Namely, they contain the same values. So we have this piece of code by which Goku and Goku copy are exactly the same. I mean, they have exactly the same values for all the member variables. You can see the output, they're exactly the same. How do I compare these two structs? Well, let's write a function compare that takes two pointers to the actual structs. And what if I use uh, the mem compare? So I do mem compare, pass the two pointers, and here I say size of and the type, which is struct saiyan. Of course here I have to change into an integer because the mem compare returns zero if the two strings are identical, otherwise returns the difference between the first two differing bytes. So let's write this function. Basically I say compare Goku and Goku copy. If the return is equal to zero, it means that they are equal, right? So we just print an equal, otherwise we print a different. What do you think? Is this compare, may, namely using the mem compare function, on these two structs, we return equal or different? Well, of course, I have a, here a difference. This is of course because we have the pointers which are pointing on different places in memory, right? Here we, the, here with mem compare, we are doing the comparison between pointers, not by the actual pointed strings. We have indeed a shallow comparison, right? So this mem compare is simply comparing these two things which are obviously different because of these pointers. Now you may say, well, if we simply use the Goku string here, this will probably work, right? Because the pointer is going to be exactly the same. It's gonna point to the actual same string. Let's try now, compile and launch. And as you can see this time, I have an equal sign. Of course, this way of making the comparison is not robust because I just proved you that if the string is a duplicate in the heap, the strings are equal, right? We have Goku and Goku, but the pointers are different. Now, it's a coincidence that in this case, the compiler is gonna make the pointers, it's gonna save space, but you don't have to assume that. So the best way by far to make comparison between structs is to compare every field. So here I have this other function, which is basically returning the comparison field by field. Here I have the string, then I have the boolean for the super saiyan, and then I have the actual power. So if all of these three are actually equal, I'm gonna have true. So this is a deep comparison, as you can see, right? Because I do a string compare of the actual strings, not the pointers. Let's try in this case. I do compare one. One thing that I have to change is this zero because my specific function is gonna return me true. So it's gonna return me true if all the comparisons are true, right? Contrary to mem compare that is gonna be return me zero if the comparison is equal. So I compile a launch. And as you can see this time I get equal. So I don't care if here I have a 
string duplicate, right? And the other one is a string literal because this deep comparison is gonna go deep. So this is the best way to perform a comparison between structs, field by field. 